All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Han Wall. I am a folio training specialist at EBSCO. I'm actually based out of Brisbane, Australia. Uh, my contact details are up on the screen now. So if you have any questions about anything that I covered today, or if you have any questions about folio in general, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. So today's session is cataloging in Folio. So I just wanted to give you a quick sneak peek of various cataloging options available in Folio. So the session itself is a bite-sized session. I'm planning to spend about 15 minutes with you. So I won't be going into too much details of cataloging in Folio, but I do want to share various cataloging options that are available in Folio. And throughout this webinar, you will get a sneak peek of some of the um, relevant apps within Folio that uh, a cataloger might be using if you do decide to implement Folio for your library. So to start with, I wanted to share this slide with you. Um, so this slide just covers the record hierarchy of the inventory app in Folio, which is like a place for your catalog records in Folio. So, and I wanted to cover this briefly because without having a good idea of this record hierarchy in Folio, you may not get a good understanding of these cataloging options that I want to discuss later today. So, there are three different record hierarchies in Folio that I may refer to throughout today's session, which would be your instance records, your holdings records, and your items records. So instance records are a record that contains bibliographic and administrative information about a particular resource. So the instance record is what is known as the bibliographic record, and they're mostly derived from full bibliographic records in MARC, for example. And they are intended to provide information for library staff to identify and select records in order to perform work on associated holdings and items records. And holdings records are um, records that contains information such as location, call number and volumes owned that enable staff to locate and manage library holdings for materials in all formats. And holdings records are associated with instance records. And in Folio world, you could have holdings records with underlying mark records with it, or you may choose to just create holdings records in Folio without any underlying mark records. And finally, we have the item record, which is a record that contains information needed to identify and track a single item or a piece. So the item record contains data specific to a single volume or piece, such as barcode and circulation status. Um, and this data structure is inspired by BibFrame and is meant to provide a consistent data structure for records independent of their source metadata schema. So as of today, Folio only supports MARC source records, but there are development plans to support other metadata schema, such as BitFrame or Unimark or Dublin Core or anything else. So the goal of this inventory record hierarchy is that Folio will try to surface all of your bibliographic records in a consistent way, regardless of the source. So regardless of having MARC records or BibFrame records or Unimark records, you will be presented in the Folio environment with instance holdings and items records, again, regardless of what that source is. 
So we have another layer called source record storage or SRS as we call it, which is a sub layer of folio inventory that stores metadata in other schema and mapping that metadata out to the instance record via an underlying mapping file for the folio tenant. So if you have MARC records, they will be stored in SRS and will be surfaced with your instance holdings and items record. So again, the key takeaway from this slide is that Folio has a hierarchical structure for cataloging records and that in the future, when we start supporting various sources for BIP records, it will display all of these records in a consistent way, regardless of the source of the bibliographic records. Um, so does anyone have any questions about this record hierarchy before I move on to the actual cataloging part of the session? Not seeing anything in the chat or Q&A, thank you. All right, so moving on, I have five different types of cataloging options that I want to share with you today. And we'll go through these one by one. And when we say inventory, it actually refers to this app within Folio that manages your bibliographic records. And these five ways include um, creating some source record storage records, which means it's got that mark record underneath, or it might sometimes just create an instance record without any mark underlying it. So we will discuss these five ways in greater detail today. So I'm just going to bring up my Folio environment here. This is the main landing page of Folio, and I'm seeing um, my apps at the very top here and as well as the drop down apps menu here. So everything is available for me, but we'll be spending majority of the time today in this inventory app. So this is where I can search and find my instance records or holdings or items record. So if I just quickly do, uh, if I just quickly use a filter to show you what these instance records look like. This is an example of an instance record. And here you can see that the title and the author of information is presented at the top. And I have a separate accordion for any of the holdings or um, item records here. And I get my administra administrative data, such as um, when it was uploaded, what the source is, what the catalog date is, and so on. And I can find my title data here. I have a list of identifiers, the contributors, um, subject terms, and so on. And so this is an example of an instance record followed by a holdings record that I can view from here that will contain my call number and location and the item record with barcode and circulation rules behind it. So. The first way to create instance record is using a single record import. And this um, happens with the connection with Z39.50 target profiles that you can set in the settings area of Folio. So you can set as many Z39.50 target profiles as you would like, and we can simply perform a single record import. Many libraries choose to connect their OCLC or any other target profiles that they would be using. So to do that, I am just going to click on the actions menu here and we do have an option here called import. And this allows me to select which target profile I want to use. So I'm gonna use Library of Congress. And I can also choose which profile to be used in this single record import. And when I say profile, Folio will let you decide which fields from your incoming record to be put in which fields in Folio. 
So you can pre-configure all of these profiles in advance and you can select which profiles you want to use for that single record import. So I am just going to quickly copy paste in a identifier in here and click on import. And you will notice that Folio had just pulled in that instance record for me with the source of Mark using that C39.50 target profile. So this is one way of creating um, Mark records or instance records in Folio. Another way to create an instance record without any underlying Mark records behind it is simply creating a instance record with a source of folio, indicating that there is no mark records behind it. And that's done pretty easily again by clicking on this actions menu and clicking on new. And this is a form that you can fill in to create this instance record. So you can uh, put in some administrative data here such as you can suppress it from your discovery, you can add in a catalog date. Um, there are only two required fields in this form, which is your title and your the format. So I'm, I'm just going to create a brief record called Into Thin Air. So perhaps I've just purchased this title. I don't have a mark record um, that I want to use, but I just wanted to quickly create this instance record for a reason. So I'm just going to put in the title. If I had an identifier or contributor information, I can add them in here. So this process is just manually adding all of these data into this form. So another required field would be the resource type. And I can fill in all of these information to create a folio sourced instance record without any marked records behind it. And that's fairly a simple process. And you can see that the source equals folio now. Now, with that being in mind, let's say I've created this brief record, but as time went by, I found this mark record that I want to overlay it to this folio source record that I briefly created. Then I can use this overlay source bibliographic record um, option in folio to overlay it into the exist existing instance record, which will update all of that instance field for me. So coming back to this brief record with the source of folio, I am going to click on actions to go ahead and overlay this source bibliographic record with a mark record, which is exactly the same process as a single record import where you select the target profile and select the profile to be used in overlaying this current data. And I am just going to put in the identifier in here again and click on import. And that will just overlay all of that information for me. And you can see that the source now has been updated to mark. I've got more detailed title information. I've got my author information imported to it. And I can just find um, all of these information that came through with my overlaying source bib record feature in Folio. Now, another way to create a uh, mark source record in Folio is that you can also fill in um, or create a mark bibliographic record from scratch in Folio. So for example, if I click on actions menu here, I can also click on this new mark bibliographic record option here, which gives me this blank um, space here where I can um, edit the, the leader 
and I can even add more fields to create this mark record. And you'll notice that 001, 005 and 999 are pr protected fields in Folio. It contains Folio specific identifiers in those fields, but you will be able to create a mark record from scratch if that is what you prefer to do so. In terms of creating mark source records, another thing you will be able to utilize from Folio is creating some template records in inventory, such as your self-publishing template, as you can see, which has been suppressed from my discovery. But maybe this is the form that I use whenever I need to catalog a self-published um, items and records. So for that, I would use actions to derive a new Mark bibliographic record, which means I'm not overlaying it or I'm not updating this specific record, but I am going to basically copy, paste, copy and paste the record information and derive a new Mark Bib record from this template. So when I click on this derive option, I get taken into this um, mark editing format as you can see here and I can just go ahead and make appropriate changes such as adding LCCNs here or adding ISBNs here or adding a title information here um, and so on. So you can try to derive uh, a new bibliographic record mark bibliographic record option if that is what you prefer to do. I think I had a question come through. So for Z39.50 import, how do you know the identifier? I'm more familiar with the connection that allows you to see a selection of matching records from a search and you choose which record to import. That's a great question. So when you perform a single record import, you um, select the target and you're given some guidance here for me. When I configured this Library of Congress target profile, I said to Folio that I want to use LCCN as the identifier, but I've seen some libraries using ISBNs as their target identifier. So you can pick and choose when you configure these target profiles, which identifier you want to use for each of your target. So Folio doesn't decide those identifiers for you, but rather you will be able to pick and choose which identifier you want to use for each and every external target. I hope that answers your question, but if you have any further questions, please let me know. And if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to pop it into the chat or in the Q&A. All right, so we talked about creating new Mark Bib records or deriving a Mark Bib record. And the last way to create these instance records is using a data import app. So this is a separate app outside of the inventory app, which allows you to batch import multiple records at once. So perhaps if you have recently started to, to recently purchased multiple records from a vendor and you wanted to batch import those marked records into Folio inventory, you can use what is called a data import. So again, data import is a separate app outside of the inventory app where you can just drag and drop a .mrc or .marc file. And it will just try to upload that mark file for me and will present me with the job profiles I can use for that specific batch import. So for example, we are given some default profiles as well. So if I just want to create new instance record using that default profile, I can simply select the profile, click on actions and run to batch import multiple records to Folio at once. 
And I had a couple more questions. So can you have more than one identifier for Z3950 targets? Or would you save several Z3950 target records with different identifiers? That's a great question. Um, you will not be able to have more than one identifier for a single target profile. So if you wanted to have multiple identifiers, you would have to create several Z39.50 target profiles as of today. Um, and then I had another question that said, please show an example of searching for an ISBN record where you need to choose from more than one bibliographic record. Right, um, so you want me to perform a search in inventory using an ISBN. So let's have a look. Um, I'm actually going to reset everything. Just find a quick record with an ISBN. And I'm going to perform an ISBN search for that. Um, Unfortunately, this is a, a demo environment, so I think I just have one um, record with that ISBN, but you, you're you asking me about if multiple records have like the same ISBN, is that the type of um, example that you want to see? I would have to spend some time in trying to find that example. Um, but if you can leave me your contact details, I can try to find that example and take perhaps take a screenshot and send it to you. Is that okay? I'm just being mindful of the time because I've just went over time um, a lot. So, um, if that's an okay option for you, please leave me some details and I can try to find some examples and take screenshots and, and send it to you after the session. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we looked at the five different ways of creating um, or cataloging in folio. And I will just briefly touch on this on the slides here to let you know that you can create some holdings records and items records by clicking on these add holdings or add item if, um, links here. And as I've said we from my first slide, you can um, have holdings records with underlying mark records with it or just folio source holdings records. Um, and you should be able to create as many items as you would need to for each and every holdings and instance records. Now that really takes me to the end of today's session. I really appreciate your time in coming to the session and listening to me to give you some idea about what cataloging in Folio looks like. And I apologize for going over time, but I'm more than happy to stay in this uh, webinar area for a little longer if anyone has any further questions. So please stay around and ask any questions if you need to. And I will get back to you with a link to the recording and, and slides as well. So thanks everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.